Hi everyone! Today I'm going to give a brief overview on the Royal Tombs of Aur, uh, which is a, a set of burials found at the city of Aur in southern Mesopotamia. So the burials on the tombs themselves date to the latter part of the early dynastic period. They were excavated during the late 1920s uh, in an excavation run by the Pennsylvania Museum and the British Museum, um, headed up by a man named Leonard Woolley. Um, the cemetery itself had uh, 1,850 intact burials, which is a huge number, um, with a total of 660 from the early dynastic period. Um, the site was used for a much longer period of time, uh, so some of the burials are quite a lot later than that. So most of these 660 from the early dynastic period were very simple burials with small amounts of grave goods um, and only one interred body. However, 16 of them were named by the excavator as royal tombs um, for a couple of reasons, uh, partly because of the extreme wealth of their grave goods. There was a lot of gold and silver objects, um, elaborate jewellery, chariots, um, wagons, that kind of thing, um, and some really fantastic um, lyres. I'll try and find some pictures of those, they're beautiful. Um, but more interestingly, also the fact that they contained multiple individuals. So 10 of these were um, vaulted or domed stone tomb chambers found at the bottom of a pit. Um, and inside the, the stone tombs, there was one uh, what's termed principal body. Um, and that was accompanied by one or more um, attending bodies. Um, and these tombs were accompanied themselves by um, large open courtyards that were filled with additional skeletal remains, uh, human and equid, um, which means that chariots and wagons that were buried with were very often buried with, um, uh, well, not horses at that point, but um, like oxen, uh, so bovine remains, not equid remains. Um, and these courtyards are given the delightful title of death pit. Um, so as I said, the principal body was found within the stone, cha uh, stone chamber uh, with burial goods um, and a couple of attendants. And then outside there was um, a, a courtyard with multiple other human remains. Uh, Leonard Woolley, the excavator, argued that this was actually evidence for mass suicide and that the attendants were um, willingly killed themselves uh, out of loyalty and devotion to their master or mistress who was considered the, the principal burial. Um, for example, in one of the tombs, in one of the death pits, PG-1237, uh, there were drinking vessels found near the bodies of these attendants, which led to the conclusion that they'd willingly drunk poison. Um, that's a really nice kind of romantic thought. Uh, unfortunately, that is most definitely not the case. Uh, recent scans of some of the skulls that were found uh, in the death pits show massive trauma to the back of the head, indicating that these people weren't there or out of their own free will and were, well, either coerced or forced down and then hit over the back of the head and killed. Um, Osteological uh, analysis of these skeletons also shows that they belonged to individuals who did a lot of physical labour, uh, so much so that it altered their um, physiology. So they had um, very strong musculature and, and marks on the bones that show that either they were chariot drivers or they were accustomed to carrying very heavy loads for a long period of time. Um, this suggests uh, a quite clear class division. Um, interestingly, in the early dynastic period is, is kind of the first time we have um, a social stratigraphy in Mesopotamia with a, an elite ruling class um, who control the, the so-called common people beneath them who would have done most of the physical labour. So what uh, the bone evidence suggests we're seeing um, is the burial of one um, wealthy elite individual um, along with... Uh, in some cases, 70-plus uh, um, labourers, effectively. So the, that's 10, 10 of the 16 royal tombs. The remaining six were just the death pits, um, but probably had tombs associated with them in antiquity. Um, a problem we have with um, excavation is that a lot of the time, um, archaeologists aren't the first people to discover a site. Um, things get looted and removed, uh, so you don't always have the complete picture when you finally get to excavate. 
So PG-1237, as I, which I previously mentioned, is the largest known death pit with 74 attendants. Sadly, there's no main tomb chamber with this burial, um, including six men and 68 women. Um, and they have headdresses of gold, silver and lapis lazuli, which was a very, very valuable commodity in the ancient Near East. Um, PG-800 is probably the most famous burial of the lot. It's the tomb of Queen Puabi. Um, Again, as with all of them, they have incredibly elaborate grave goods. Um, the queen herself had this fantastic headdress and beaded garment. Um, and excitingly, we actually know her name because she was buried with her cylinder seal. Um, and uh, a PG-800, Puabi's tomb, um, and an another associated burial, PG-789, between the two of them had a minimum of 86 people interred. So, that's a lot of people. Um, and it's really not something that you see happening a lot in the ancient Near East. Um, you don't get a lot of human sacrifice, you don't get a lot of mass burials. Um, this is really the only evidence we have for human sacrifice in Mesopotamia, um, and why it occurs at this time has been a matter of quite a lot of scholarly discussion. Um, the earliest argument uh, made by Woolley and, and followed up by a couple of other people was that these people willingly sacrificed their lives to their rulers out of devotional loyalty. Um, this has largely been discredited because of the osteological evidence showing that these people were killed quite violently. Um, so another possible excl explanation has to do with the changing polit political situation in the early dynastic period. Uh, like I said, this is the first time that we know of that such extreme social stratification has existed, um, there's a definite elite that holds the majority of the power over the remaining populace. So one argument suggests that rather than a willing sacrifice to a strong king, the death pits are actually evidence for a weak and vulnerable elite that practiced ritual sacrifice in order to terrorize an unhappy populace, which would have then preserved the relatively new practice of dynastic rule and kingship. So through the practice of public sacrifice, the ruled peoples are then persuaded to accept and participate in their own domination by those who terrorise them. 